Hi folks, what we'd like to do today is talk about mixtures. We'd like to talk about solutions, which are homogeneous mixtures, and two types of heterogeneous mixtures, colloids and suspensions. So let's just start by reviewing solutions. We have talked about this before, um, but they are homogeneous mixtures, so all the pieces, all the components are evenly dispersed throughout the sample, right? the solute and the solvent. All right. Now normally when we talk about solutions, um, in order to get this even distribution, it requires the particles to be really quite small in radius. We're talking, you know, on the scale of a nanometer or smaller, uh, so really quite tiny. Now, that's not the purpose of this webcast, to have you memorize that. I'm just trying to give you an idea of relative scale, All right? The particles are really small, so if you take a true solution and try to pass it through filter paper, you're not going to recover any of the solute particles by filtration. They're just too small. They'll pass right through the pores in the, por in the filter paper. All right. The other thing about solutions is the components stay evenly distributed throughout the entire sample. And if you leave it standing, you're not generally going to see the solute particles separating or you know, precipitating out in a stable solution. All right. Now, suspensions are heterogeneous mixtures. All right. Um, examples of suspensions that you may be familiar with, clay in water or muddy water. And if you leave these guys to settle, as we show in the picture here, you'll actually see sedimentation down at the bottom. All right. Um, you'll see undissolved solid particles at the bottom. So we're not talking about a saturated solution where maybe there's undissolved solute. We're actually talking about this just not remaining evenly dispersed. All right. Um, they are heterogeneous. All right, and you'll see a nice interface right, between the um, solvent and the this solute that's fallen to the bottom. The particles will settle to the bottom if you just don't disturb the sample, if you don't, say, stir it up. All right. And of course, the particles are fairly large compared to the particles in a solution, large enough that you can actually recover them by filtration, and that's what's shown here in this picture where we've actually filtered it. Well, I didn't do it, but you can actually recover those samples. All right. So we're usually talking particles that are 100 to 1,000 times larger in diameter than what you're going to see in a solution. This is part of the reason why they're not staying evenly dispersed. They're going to just settle to the bottom. They're a lot bigger. So we're talking 100 to 1,000 nanometer particles on average in a suspension. I just thought this was funny. If one more person asks for a protein shake, I'll give you a suspension. I just love the chemistry cat. They're really funny. Um, ink is actually a suspension. All right. The particles for the pigments are finely ground solids, and you put them in a liquid. It might be a po um, the liquid might be a polymer water mixture, and then the polymers link together and solidify when exposed to air. The water will evaporate, and it'll leave just the solid pigment behind. Um, and there are a lot of different pigments that are used. Yellow ink could be lead to chromate. Red ink might be cal cadmium selenide. Blue ink might be this compound with the um, complex ion in it. Um, then get quite involved. White inks, I didn't show it here, might be TiO2, which is also used for white paints. Uh, so there's a lot of different possibilities here, but they're really suspension. Sometimes you might notice your inks need to be mixed up if you're into like uh, writing with not a ballpoint pen, but, um, you know, uh, other pens. All right, now colloids are sort of intermediate between liquids and uh, true solutions and suspensions. Um, they may be milky or cloudy in appearance. It's not always easy to look at a sample and know if it's uh, a true solution or not, and sometimes colloids, especially when they're quite dilute, may appear very evenly dispersed. Um, they don't separate on standing, um, and you can't recover the particles by filtration, and yet they're not homogeneous either. They're sort of in between, all right? We're talking about particles that are somewhere, you know, greater than one but less than 100 nanometers in diameter, all right? So they're, they have intermediate properties between solutions and suspensions, all right? Some examples of colloids that you may be familiar with, marshmallows, all right, foams, all right, uh, whipped cream, thog is a suspension of liquids in, in water. Um, mayonnaise is an, exa an example of a type of colloid called an emulsion. Jello, <laughs> all right. A lot of your hair gels, uh, toothpaste, <coughs> oh, 
sorry about that, are all um, different colloids. Fog can be colloidal, um, smoke. Um, milk is also colloidal in nature. All right. Um, one of the properties that we see of these heterogeneous solutions, uh, or heterogeneous mixtures, we shouldn't say solutions, is the Tyndall effect. All right. Um, suspensions and colloids will scatter light beams and make them visible. Can lead to some very nice photography. All right. Um, if you are driving in a heavy, fo heavy fog and you turn on your high beams, the scattering that you see is also the Tyndall effect. So this is something that we see a lot on an everyday basis. All right. Um, but it can be a way to tell liquids, uh, solutions from heterogeneous mixtures. If we see here, we've got a laser beam being um, passed through two colorless uh, and clear mixtures, all right, but you can see in the left one that uh, the, the beam is not visible in the right one, all right, but it is visible in the left-hand one, all right, which suggests that the one on the right is a solution, all right, where it truly is homogeneous. And we have a heterogeneous mixture in this left-hand picture. All right. Oh, I thought this was a cool picture. This is uh, passing a laser beam through the steam from a humidifier. And you can see, the, the, as the, the vapor from the humidifier, you can see that laser beam really, really clearly but you can't see the rest of the beam because it's not being scattered by the air, which is a homogeneous mixture. All right. uh, as an aside, I thought I'd mention colloidal silver. It's a colloidal base of microscopic, just tiny little silver particles in a colloid setting. All right. um, in the 90s especially, uh, using silver preparations as a home health product was becoming quite popular, um, but if you use a lot of these, it can lead to argyria, which is a condition where silver salts deposit in your skin and turn the skin a bluish gray color. Um, how much silver this takes is unknown, and the color discoloration is permanent. Um, all right, Stan Jones was a politician from Montana who ran for the Senate, um, and he was making a colloidal silver uh, mixture um, out of fear that the um, changing of the clocks for the year 2000, the Y2K fears, uh, would disrupt the antibiotic supply and he actually did turn himself blue as he was running for office. Um, maybe not the wisest move. Um, all right, so to make sure you've got it, here's a situation. You're given three beakers containing three unknown mixtures. How are you going to tell if these three beakers contain a suspension, a solid, or a colloid? What test will you do? What order will you do them in? How will you interpret this data? Uh, write out a plan and we bring it to class tomorrow and we will uh, talk about it there.